वन टू थ्री फोर नॉट अकाउंटिंग लेसन बट नाउ वी हैव फोर टूल्स वाट फोर नो विथ दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू हैव फोर टूल्स ओके सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट समथिंग इज क्रिटिकल इंपॉर्टेंट विच इज कैशिंग राइट विच इज अ कैशिंग so you may already use in this or may you be or already use this somewhere or you you may be a user of this cash okay so but today we are going to learn how we can use this caching tool to build your solution how wh- how we can implement the caching what are the drawbacks and the advantages and what are the workarounds we have for the caching okay so if you take the caching you can you have two different levels right you have a client side cache and also you have server side cache right client side cache and the server side cache so for example let's say you have a client server application let's say you have a microservice right so this is your employee service your usual service right and then you have angular ui okay so now this angular ui is authenticating with Uh, Google, right? Signing with Google consent. Okay, so you can once users authenticated from the Google, you can cache this token, right? You can cache this token on your local storage, or you can use like a Redux or a NgRx or whatever that you are caching to if you want. But otherwise, you can use the local storage caching, right? You can close the token. and let's say so sometime uh, let's say you let's say you have some few values right you have a, a currency rate right you have a currency rate and you have a, a product code right product code and you have a demand right so once you have these three values you need to go to back end and calculate some uh, projection or some sort of a answer so let's say this is this takes a lot of time to calculate right so let's say you don't have to go to back end so let's say you have this thing and you need to do a lot of calculations to get some particular value right maybe you need to calculate the um, standard deviation some tons of calculation right so once you calculate these things we know if you give x y z out input right you always get a b c as a output right so now what you can do is you can cache this computed value right why because if you get the same input again you don't have to go to re- uh, recalculate right let's say this calculation take 2 seconds you don't have to go to this 2 second because you can instantly do it right instantly do it also you can cache static content sometimes maybe a logo sometimes maybe a script right sometimes maybe static content uh, some web content you can do all those content type of thing in the cache on the uh, front end level so this is side the client side caching okay so we are going to talk about the disadvantages and how to invalidate the caching and everything in, in a while or, or, or how we can do a cache miss what happened and how we can avoid that right but for example this is a client side caching now let's go to see what a server side caching server side caching means something like this let's say you have a ui right so this ui need three parameters right let's say product type right product group product code right product type product group or product code right so once you give these three parameters you need to take this to back end and get all the values and take the values here and group by for these three values as well as the location let's say the location is coming up with a record you need to group these values and show in a grid let's say something like that that's your task okay so now if you get the product type product group and the product code right so group by location is kind of uh, always same right as long as you give the record and depend on how how frequently this record creating on the back end let's say this is a not frequently creating record let's say it's okay to have 5 minute uh, delay 5 minute uh, availability time 5 minute valid time for these records right so now what you can do is you can get this request the server side 
you can cash this value product type a b c right and if the a b c comes right okay this is the response so let's say to populate this response you take 5 seconds right so the very first user when he come to the system he spend 5 seconds right to load the screen load the grid but every subsequent user who go within a 5 minutes because if you think expired time is a 5 minute right it depends right if you think this is a 30 minutes valid yeah you win right so within the 5 minute every user who give the same uh, parameters get the record less than five, less than one second. Why? Because they don't have to go to the database and fetch from the database and group all those things. Why? Because you can do that in the backend itself, right? So you can cache from the backend process data, right? Process data. Okay. The second thing, like we discussed in the front end, if you do expensive calculation let's say you have some one value you need to traverse through a graph and go to uh, leaf nodes and find those leaf nodes values and get the average and so many things so it, it consumes right not only the computation power the traversing the graph and so many power right traversing the graph this time and computing time tc and let's say do some other works right so if you get this t total value let's say this is a five seconds Right? You can cash this value based on the input. Then you can, I mean, the first user will still experience this. But let's say, even first user you can avoid, right? So once the user select these three, before user click something else, you can send this value to the backend and cash, right? Even the first user won't experience this delay. So you can do, uh, you can cash process data as well as you can cache the compute data as well. But there can be, there can be a situation we are all good right there has to be a, some sort of a catch here okay so the, so what we discuss is a read caching right and then, yeah that's a catch let me just show you right we can have a write caching as well right what are the write caching mean so write caching mean let's say you have a database right so always database resources are expensive even for scaling the database I mean, it takes some time to synchronize the eventual consistency, right? And also, the number of connections you can expose this database is limited. Connection pool, let's say 200 connections. Okay? So now, if you need more than 200 writes to this database, what you can do is, your front end will write to the cache. Right? Your front end will write to the data to the cache. And there can be someone in the middle, the cache processors, they read from the cache and write to the database. Right? Read from the cache and write to the database. The B call is the write back caching. Right? So this may be in a one minute interval, 30 second interval, 5 second interval, 10 minutes interval, it depends on what how you need. So you always deal with the caching, but separate process there to synchronize the cache and the database. Okay? So you need to be very careful on this because there can be situations suddenly cache get uh, something happened with the caching server then you have, have to have a distributed caching server to do something like this because the users deal with the cache and then uh, when you write it here you're done right if you can't write uh, something happened between writing so there is something called write through cache write through cache mean so when you you write to the cache in the same transaction, you write to the database as well, right? So people always reading from the cache, but when you're writing, you write to the pool. In that case, you're guaranteed caching and the database is always in sync. But the catch here is uh, when you uh, sign this in the same transaction, let's say this is take T1, this is take T2, Right, so total T will be T1 plus T2, right? So the, that's a catch because you take this time on the writing, but not like a write back cache. With the write back cache, you don't have this time, but here you have this time. But when you're reading, you're always reading from the cache, so it is super fast, right? So it's always, I, I'm telling you the option is always based on your use case how to do and uh, how to implement that, okay? So let's get the real, uh, some real use cases, okay? So how see how we can uh, handle this thing? So 
let's say uh, you are creating a comment to a product right let's say you are showing some product right here in your shopping cart so user can give user can give feedback right so now this feedback you have multiple servers to process okay so let's assume this feedback go to this server right so now writing on the cache right it doesn't go to the server it write the cache okay so now the problem is he write the feedback and so now he update the feedback the update request go to this server right so now you can see this server is not aware about this caching why because it is not written to the database yet right so now you can see cache creating problem okay because you cache it here this server is not connected to the database but some same time you are going to update the cache and you hit to the different server that server is not aware about your comment or your feedback okay that's one problem the second problem is let's say let's say you write to the cache right and then now you update it now it's in the database now user feel bad about it user want to update the comment right so now when you go and update the comment right the update is go to the caching that update is not go to the database yet but if someone is reading this feedback he is reading from the database which is the version 1 because version 2 is still in the cache you can see this tend to read expired content that's bad sometimes right because if your comment is feedback is critical it's always good to have the real time feedback and the data right so in that case in that type of cases if you ask some type of question like that you can propose to have a caching cluster that is cluster cache which is a centralized okay so now what everyone every these servers read the cache from this cluster right the redis cluster okay i mean i mean the redis it can be mem cache or anything right the redis is the most famous one that's what i use that okay so now everyone reading from here everyone is writing also to the same caching cluster so in that case we are safe why because doesn't matter which service endpoint you are hitting the service endpoint referring to the same data that mean you don't maintain server wise caching instead of that you have a centralized caching server separately with a cluster distributed cluster so that each server every server will refer to the same cluster so you can avoid that problem like that so so that mean in your solution if your data is so critical right either you need to use write through caching technique so which mean you write the cache or you write the database or else you need to write uh to the centralized caching but if your data something like um how many visitors in your uh, site or how many people bought this it is not a very critical data right i mean it's critical but it's a top critical data it's okay to have a little time to sync this data so in that case you can use a uh, service wise uh, caching or a in memory caching or a uh, sidecar caching right this this let's say these are services they have a sidecar caching right so you can use that if your data is not top critical to be synchronized okay so we learn cache multiple ways you can do write cache read cache and the two techniques write through and write back and also what are the problems you uh, will face when you propose the caching solution and how you can overcome so now we have four tools how many things we can do with these four tools right okay So we'll see you in another video. Stay safe. Take care.